Uthred's journey has finally come to an end now in Season 5 of The Last Kingdom, which has just been released. Many of us aren't ready to let go of the Viking world just yet. Luckily, Seven Kings Must Die is already in the making. So what's the news on that? What are fans doing to relive the Viking experience? And what's the real reason that The Last Kingdom was cancelled? Don't you worry, my curious soul, you're gonna find out in this video. So let's start with The Last of Kingdom had inspired a Viking event, an event born out of the confines of lockdown and a deep desire desire felt by the producers and many fans of The Last Kingdom to relive the Viking experience. Fantasy is all of the UK's first bespoke and intimate celebration of The Last Kingdom. And to make that happen, the producers also founded a whole new Nordic quote-unquote company named Made in Media Productions. It's short, it's a love for a show that has gone so far that now the rest of the world can benefit from it as well. Heather, Ashley, and Kara already have other jobs and seven children between them, and a podcast too, but obviously they felt like the end of the series doesn't have to mean the end of the Viking experience, which is why at the end of May 2022, some very lucky people will be going to fantasy as all. The event is going to be a mix of Comic-Con and a Viking event, but not quite, that's kind of just a ballpark approximation term. The main difference is how intimate fantasy is all will be. With events like Comic-Con and festivals often attracting literally thousands of people, on fantasy for all, this would be limited to 300. This means that people will actually have a chance of talking with their favorite characters, and maybe even do an activity or two. Because yes, there will be actors from The Last Kingdom present there too, my god yes! And aside from panels, there will be activities planned as well, so the founders probably won't be dressing up, but pretty much everyone else is invited to do so. And next up, Eliza Butterworth wants an espionage spinoff. She wasn't exactly everyone's favorite, but Ellsworth had one of the most interesting and satisfying character arcs in the end. But just like pretty much everyone else who watched The Last Kingdom, the actress who portrayed her, Eliza Butterworth, doesn't really want the adventure to end, which is why Butterworth came up with the idea of an espionage spinoff for Ailswith, Edith, and Ailswith. Elfwin. She even has an idea for what it might be called, the Saxon Spies. This idea was let go into the world by Butterworth herself in a response to an Instagram post of the official Last Kingdom account, in which we see Aylesworth finally unravels Aethelhelm's plans. Butterworth said that it was one of her all-time favorite series and ultimately her inspiration for her very own spinoff, but it can't have been a simple, fleeting thought, because she even tagged people she'd want to be a part of it. Among those were Faya Saban, Stephanie Martini, Harry Anton, Luke Nunn, with Anthony Phillipson for directing. Unfortunately for us, it's just a joke. Or is it? Of Butterworth's, no actual plans for any such show are technically in the making. But who knows? If enough fans make enough noise and whoop and holler about it, stranger things have happened. Stranger things has also happened. So, wordplay. Next up, what was the real Ellsworth like? Despite everything, Ellsworth came through in the end. And maybe Butterworth's cry for a spinoff wouldn't be such a bad idea after all. If anything, her extraordinary arc in The Last Kingdom proves that the life of the Queen might be worth taking a closer look at. Maybe. But it wouldn't be quite as violent as we'd seen on The Last Kingdom if we would look at Aylesworth's real-life inspiration. According to history expert Professor Clara Downham, her life wasn't nearly as bloody. She was the daughter of a Mercian noble, and her mother was a member of the Mercian royal family. Aylesworth married Alfred, heir to the Kingdom of Wessex in 868, a marriage that was probably meant to improve relationships with Wessex and Mercia, like so many other marriages were in those times. And though Alfred would live to become one of the most famous kings that ever lived, Alfred the Great, not much is known about Ellsworth. She never appeared as Alfred's witness in any of his charters. In contemporary sources, she's almost never mentioned, so it's really hard to get a clear picture of her. Even Alfred's contemporary biographer never mentions Ellsworth. According to West Saxon customs, she never truly held the title of queen. Everything added up together makes it look like Ellsworth is yet another one of those forgotten figureheads of the Anglo-Saxon history, which could make it perfect to give this lady a spin-off all to her lonesome. And who knows, Butterworth's wishes may very well come true. But don't go anywhere yet, don't click off the video, I swear to god I'm watching you. Next up, we have everything we know so far about Seven Kings Must Die, and how The Last Kingdom Season 5 finale set up the new movie. And of course, the real reason why The Last Kingdom was cancelled. Let's go! <laughs> First, what's new with Seven Kings Must Die? Most of us will have binged the final season of The Last Kingdom by now, but any diehard fan is gonna know that this isn't the end, and the movie will have given us all that closure that we so longingly and desperately needed. Seven Kings Must Die is in the making. So, what can we tell so far about the two hour long movie that can also be viewed as a standalone piece? The movie's gonna cover everything from the three final books of the 
original series, the Saxon Stories, written by Bernard Cornwell. Just like the beginning of filming, it was Alexander Draymond who let the world know that filming has officially wrapped by sharing it on Instagram. In a heartfelt message to fans, he let us know that he's officially come to the end of the road with Uthred, taking his armor off for the final time. He said that the show wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for the fans, and the whole crew is incredibly grateful for the journey that it's taken them on. But here the road must finally come to an end with Seven Kings Must Die, which means the movie can finally head into post-production and make its way to us eager fans. Unfortunately, Dremond didn't let us in on any possible release date or anything cool like that, because no information on it is yet available. But progress has been made, and it is just a matter of when from here on out. Following how the season 5 finale of The Last Kingdom sets up The Seven Kings Must Die, at the end of The Last Kingdom, we can finally raise our glasses in a toast to Bebenberg instead of our swords. Uthred has fulfilled his destiny and found a home for his children and a stronghold for his people. But life didn't end there, and it won't be all fun from peace from now on. Uthred has settled, but at the same time stirred up fresh conflict with the king, creating a literal barrier between Edward and his father's dream of a united England. And just in case you'd forgotten about Osbert, Uthred's youngest son, the last time we see him, we find him with the child on the holy island of Lindisfarne. They're on their way to meet the new Lord of Bebenberg, whom Hild says can tell Osbert about his origins. Having Osbert entered the stage will certainly stir up some dust and bring some, um, drama to make us happy. Ellsworth has proved herself to be more hardy than anybody could have ever predicted, but she's absolutely still standing. And we have Eltistan, who we saw Uthred himself train for leadership and a career on the battlefield. Anyone with a shred of knowledge about his part of history knows that Eltistan will eventually succeed Edward as king, and he'll probably remain in Bebenberg in preparation for when the day of his rule will come. But how this is all gonna unravel, I guess we'll just have to wait until Seven Kings Must Die is finally out. And now, drumroll please. The real reason why The Last Kingdom was cancelled. Some people have been left feeling cheated when they realize that there are in total 13 books in the series that The Last Kingdom is based on, yet the TV series adaptation will only cover the first 10 books. But there won't be season 6 of The Last Kingdom. Instead, we'll be treated to a two hour long movie that'll give us the closure that we all so desperately need. But why was the show not just given another season? Alexander Draymond himself put the rumors that The Last Kingdom was cancelled to rest by opening up about the plans for for the show at MCM London Comic Con. He says that the decision was made a long time ago that The Last Kingdom would be five seasons long. No more, no less. Because at the time, there were ten books in the series written by Bernard Cornwell. And so, the show was made in such a way from the very beginning that they'd always known that season five was going to be the last one, with the intention of doing two books for every TV show season. Five seasons was, to no one but the fans, a surprise. And those who were not let in on the early plans. But that doesn't change that the show will technically be closed off after season 5. Luckily, everyone felt like there was more of a story to tell, and the final books are going to be making their way to our screens through Seven Kings Must Die. And that's about it. So, do you think they made the right decision to finish off the story as a movie, or would you have preferred to see another season of TV? Something else to binge watch, you know? Let us know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.